Hello every Irish guy at right. It's that time of year again. So, let's take a look at every Premier League club and predict each team's summer signing who is going to flop. Yeah, I know what's coming. Oh, congrats to all of these players on having unbelievable seasons. I bet you think you're really clever, wise guy. Ah, who are we kidding? One of these players are probably going to win the Ballon d'Or. Right, let's go. Arsenal, Ricardo Calafiori. Okay, lads. Everybody loves a transfer saga, right? At the minute, the will they, won't they, Arsenal saga with Mikel Marino must be driving everybody insane. Poor old Marino is probably considering swimming to London just to get the deal done. Arsenal, I'm coming! I'm coming, Arsenal! Ah, Arsenal, Arsenal, I'm coming! No! I'm coming! That was weird. But lads, Ricardo Calafiori is a 22-year-old horse of a defender who just landed himself a five-year deal at Arsenal worth four million euros a year. So relax. The bloke doesn't care if I predict him to be a flop. But I just think this is the perfect example of big clubs falling into the trap of buying players based off a quality international tournament. It's that sort of short-term brainwashing that nearly had Milan Barros joining Barcelona instead of Samuel Eto'o. Yeah, within a couple of years, he was a fat pumpkin on the Portsmouth bench, whilst Eto'o was winning multiple trebles. Look, Calafiori had a decent debut season at Bologna last season, after being rescued from the Swiss League by Thiago Motta. But don't forget, he was turfed out of Roma after 12 years and just 10 Serie A matches. And you'll notice how I haven't mentioned who that Roma manager was. Yeah, this feels like being in rehab. I want to say his name so bad. Look, Calafiori is a versatile defender, but I think we all know he has not been bought by center back for the Gunners. Trying to get into the Gabrielle Saliba partnership is a bit like somebody giving me the mission of breaking up Beyonce and Jay-Z. I had a better luck sneaking into Alcatraz. And, well, is he really going to start as a left back then? Doubtful, because isn't this supposed to be Jurian Timber's year? Again, I mean, he's not dislodging Ben White at right back. And chuck in the fact that there's still Alexander Zinchenko, Jacob Kivor, Takiro Tomiyasu, and even Kieran Tierney buzzing about. There are so many defensive options. And I reckon Calafiori, he's going to take months to adjust to the Premier League. By Christmas, he's going to be regularly knocked off the ball with such ease. You think you were looking at the Harry Potter bookworm, reluctantly trying to a run in PE. I think he's going to have a horror season. Ask the Villa Ross Barkley. What is the point? Why, why, why? I realize Ross Barkley just had a nice little comeback season at Luton Town, but is he suddenly ready for Champions League football at 30 years of age? This is too much too soon. It feels like only five minutes ago he was an unwanted beef burger wallowing on a beach in France, struggling to comprehend what on earth a croissant is. This is a former wonder kid whose England career unceremoniously ended five years ago. That is not Champions League material. Again, it's too much too soon. It's like if, it's like when Brendan Fraser came out of the Hollywood wilderness to, to play the fat bloke in the whale. Okay, great. His career is in recovery. Fine. But don't make him the next James Bond. And what makes this even weirder is that Barkley already had a loan stint at Villa three years ago. If bottom half Villa didn't think he was worth another season, then why do Champions League Villa? Look, it is very common for fallen stars to be given a generous job by a former club, like Shinji Kagawa being welcomed back from his Manchester to hell by Borussia Dortmund, or a chubby Finnish puppet like Joe Cole returning to West Ham, and both fallen idols Andrei Shashenko and Kaka re-signing for AC Milan, a down and out forgotten Gareth Bale getting a loan return to Spurs. But they all made sense because they were unbelievable in their first spells. But this, this is a bit like me. After an awkward podcast with the bloke of football 25 years ago, it's like if he suddenly invites me to his wedding. What? Football daily pundits aren't able to speak to human women. But look, Barkley will start five Premier League matches and will mostly look like a tired, unfit dog. Bournemouth Dean Kutchen. Look, Bournemouth fans have been getting excited over the signature of a Dutch... Spanish wonder child this summer, bringing in highly rated centre back Dean Hutchin from Juventus for a potential 15 million pounds. But let's all calm down. He is a Spanish defender who plays for the Spain under 21s and came through the academy at Malaga before joining Juventus. But he only played once for the senior team, and he did okay on loan at Roma last season. Yes, but I don't know. Clearly, the six foot six inch giant is a replacement for Lloyd Kelly at the back. But I just think in his debut season in English football, when he's got less than 50 career senior appearances to his name, I think he might struggle. Brentford Fabio Carvalho. Look, Fabio Carvalho is a talent, but boy is his reputation getting smeared all over a pooey slice of toast. This is someone who was at Fulham. Oh, he had both England and Portugal fighting over his passport. But now, I wouldn't be shocked to see him retire without a single senior cap to his name. I would imagine both Portugal manager Roberto Martinez and uh, England boss... <sighs>
Kazli, Kazli! Sorry, that almost made me sick of my mouth. I think they're both likely to think more about the Penguin of Happy Feet than the Arcavalio on a weekly basis. This is somebody who was completely ignored by Klopp at Anfield. He couldn't break into the team on loan at RB Leipzig and spent the second half of last season embarrassingly unknown at Hull, where, to be fair, he did score nine goals in 20 games from the field. I just think this man is stuck in a rut. Is he? Is he good enough for the Premier League? For the Bees to sanction a huge 27.5 million pound deal. I mean, considering you've seen a number 10 like Mikkel Damsgaard also struggle and choke in this Brentford team, although that might be more due to the fact that he's built like a twig. Someone please feed that man a steak. He looks like he just eats his own fingernails for lunch. I don't know, for the money paid. I think Carvalho might just have had his own self-belief and confidence squeezed out of him totally by Liverpool. I think he'll be an expensive dud. Brighton, Matt Weaver. Yeah, here we have Brighton tying up a 30 million euro deal for fine or defensive midfielder Matt Weaver, who is clearly enough to go by Dutch talent, but I just think, just like how a big name European midfielder and Mamma Dahoud was an anonymous milk muffin at the Seagulls last year, then similarly, I think Weaver will struggle to settle, won't even get in the team. Chelsea Pedro Neto. Pedro Neto missed 96 games through injury over the last three years. This ex-Wolves sick note has scored just three, three Premier League goals since Chelsea last won the Champions League. He's a 24-year-old wing talent, but he is one of those mid-table players who big clubs should resist the temptation to buy. Just stay away from him, but no. Chelsea have turned him into a 54 million pound winger and tied him into a seven-year deal. You've committed to covering this man as well. What don't you 50,000 pound a week wage until he's nearly 32. It's absolutely bonkers. You do realize this is somebody who'd probably tweak his hamstring, even just innocently opening a bag of Maltesers on the bus. Sorry, lads, but this is a joke signing. He'll barely start a match all season long after breaking a bone in his foot whilst chewing a bowl of Cocoa Pops. Look, becoming a 50 million pound winger doesn't make headlines anymore, but I just remember how much everybody thought that Raheem Sterling was a laughable rotten banana sandwich after joining Man City for that fee and delivering a very lukewarm six goals and two assists in his debut Premier League season at the Eddie had. I'm telling you now, okay? If Neto betters that total in the league, if he has a higher goal and assist, then I will eat a tin of dog food while singing Neto a love song. Crystal Palace is made a star. Yeah, pretty simple. Crystal Palace are finally getting their paws on Senegal winger as made a star, which is actually kind of scary. It feels like we're all enabling Palace's creepy, sick, baby reindeer obsession with the man because they've been chasing him for six years, drooling over him whilst at Ren, Watford, and most recently Marseille. Would not be shocked to learn the Steve Parish had secret cameras installed in his house. Even his local postman was probably a Palace spy. Anyway, Sar is coming off a pretty dreadful three-goal debut season at Marseille. Palace have probably built this guy up to be some sort of Superman and are just going to be very underwhelmed now they have him up close. I feel like when a man finally gets together with his childhood crush and um, she she turns out to actually be more annoying than hemorrhoids, Everton eliminate in DA. Again, what is with all these Premier League mid-table teams? Just queuing up to reach into the Zerbi's bucket of rubbish? Like Sar, eliminate in DA was in yet another Marseille flop who also only raised their three goals last season after quitting Sheffield United a year ago. And just like with Palace's weird obsession with Saar, the Toffees have been trying to get their hands at NDA for years as well. What confuses me is that NDA is a skillful number 10 playmaker. Exactly the sort of silky maverick footballer that Sean Dyche does not use. This is clearly a company sign. I mean, do you think Dyche signed off on this 15 million pound move? No, it's better seeing Bruce Willis buying himself a comb or me buying myself a pregnancy test. What am I going to do with it? Use it as a spoon for my frosties? This is going to be like the Toffees give a saucy, technically sweet Croatian playmaker Nikola Vlasic to Big Sam. You might as well have given him a veggie salad. Both were getting very swiftly chucked in the bin. Sorry, but NDA is going to have a completely anonymous season rotting on that bench. Fulham Ryan Sessegnon. Okay, this transfer just has to work. It has to. Come on, it's depressing enough that Ryan Sessegnon is back at Fulham at just 24. The last time he was at Craven Cottage, he had the likes of Barcelona on the phone. Sessegnon's biggest enemy is his body. He played seven minutes of football for Spurs last season. Not because Pasta Cogre thought he had all the talent of smelly sneakers. No, it was because he was gobbled up by the injury demons. Lads, Chris Palace chose not to sign him after having him on trial in pre-season. So what sort of shape do you think the guy's in? The last time he started a senior football match was January 2023. Remember when Hugo Lloris chucked one into his own net against Arsenal? That is the last time this former Wonder Kid was on a team sheet. So don't think for one second he's gonna waltz back into Fulham starting 11. Being on a football pitch is so alien to this man these days. You're probably gonna have to reteach him what a corner flag is. Honestly, this is just gonna be really forgettable. Injury plague season, where Cessna will start less than five prem matches. Just really, really sad. Ipswich Town, Liam Delap. Hmm. Should I want Liam Delap to succeed at Ipswich Town? Yes, but a moderate amount. Let's not go nuts. I don't want this kid morphing into a mini Harry Kane because he's played for England under 16s, under 17s, under 18s, under 19s, under 20s, under 21s, but his dad 
was Rory Delap. You know, the bloke who took throw-ins for Stoke like some Olympian beast. Yeah, Rory played 11 times for Ireland, so come on, Liam. After a season of being a £20 million Ipswich flop, a centre-forward who'll embarrass himself by scoring less than four Premier League goals, why not then toss your England ambition into a bucket of worms and come and play for Ireland? Come on, Liam. You know you want to. Really creepy. Leicester, Caleb Acoli. Yeah, in came Caleb Acoli. A 23-year-old Italian centre-half from Atlanta in a £10 million deal. Somebody who's thrown out on loan to Frost and known last season and sort of ruined his own Atalanta future by not only getting relegated, but actually lining out against Atalanta in a 4 0 defeat. I think Acoli will be a completely error-prone, hopeless Premier League flop. Liverpool, nobody. How have you still not signed anyone? Man City, Claudio Acaveri. Yeah, this is the season where Manchester City finally welcome their Argentinian 18-year-old attacking midfielder Claudio Acaveri into the squad. They signed him from River Plate in January and agreed to let him remain on loan there until January 2025. So we won't see him until the second half of the season. But, I mean, he did just captain Argentina at the under 17th World Cup and scored a hat-trick at the quarterfinal win over Brazil. So he's already got messy comparisons, but I don't know. When he returns to the Etihad in February, I think he's going to get the game time of a Scott Sinclair. I really don't think Pep is going to trust him yet. Man United, Matt Tice Delitz. Look, Man United have made some very clever, savvy signings this summer, but I just think Matt Tice Delitz thinks of the same unimaginative, unoriginal, typical sort of big name, high profile monster name they've continued to sign whilst they're on the decline. Lads, Dillett was a peerless Ajax centre back monster five years ago, but since then, he has joined practically invincible, league dominating sides like Juventus and Bayern Munich and contributed to both of them relinquishing their dominance. His transfers coincided with both European giants actually getting significantly worse. The fact he's onto his fourth European giant by the age of 25, that just screams of a red flag. A bit like a woman telling you over coffee that she's been divorced six times. Oh, you must be the type of crazy person who gets out your frustration by pooing on his pillow. Look, Eric Ten Hag is obviously ecstatic to get the chance to work with him again and actually getting the chance to blend him with Lissandra Martinez, two Ajax center back monsters who never actually played together. It must be like a dream, like a comic book geek when he sees all three Spider-Mans in the same film. But I do think this is too good to be true. And there is a reason Bayern were happy to sell him for just 40 million pounds. There is a reason why Vincent Company, a world-class center back himself, did not want to keep this one. I think he's going to be the center back version of Radamel Falcao, Newcastle, Willy Masuda. I am very confused. Look, I know it's hard trying to convince anyone to sign up to become a third choice striker at any club. But still, Newcastle wrapping up a 10 million pound deal for Sheffield United centre forward William Asula was the most random transfer of the summer. Considering he's just off the back of a nightmare season, this 21 year old was given 21 Premier League games with Sheffield United last season. And I bet you can't remember a single thing he did. Now, and he actually started the first three league games of the season and was then instantly dropped for a month. Zero goals all season long for one of the worst Premier League teams of all time. Look, I can see this is very much an Eddie Howe signing because he is built like a mini Solanke who Howe signed at a similar age for Bournemouth. Yeah, Solanke then had to wait 29 Premier League matches before he scored his first Cherries goal. I reckon it'll be a similar wait for Osula. Like Solanke, he ain't ready. This is... It's gonna be tough. Nottingham Forest, Elliot Anderson, 35 million pounds. 35 million for Elliot Anderson? Don't get me wrong, he's a talented Jordy midfield kid, but I don't know. After zero goals and 55 appearances for Newcastle, is he really even Premier League quality, let alone nearly 40 million pounds? No. I think he starts the season in Nuno Santos starting 11, but then he'll struggle to establish himself. And in this ever evolving, ruthless door and stacked, bloated forest squad, once you get dropped, you're done for. Anderson will get the Lewis O'Brien treatment, who started the first chunk of games for Forest when he first arrived from Huddersfield's midfield. And he looked like he's going to become a key player for Forest. Then he gets dropped and then exiled to America. Southampton, Adam Lallana. He's 36. Adam Lallana is somebody who joined Southampton in the year 2000 and spent 14 years of his life there before upsetting the fans by storming out to Liverpool. Why is he back? Is it because he's doing his coaching badges? He works in England under 21 setup, was briefly the interim Brighton manager for a week when Graham Potter left. Is he only being brought in to take up the reins at Christmas if Russell Martin really does have his ideas chewed apart on toast? It's like the Southampton owners really think this is some sort of romantic homecoming. Like when Joaquin returned to his hometown Real Batiste after nine years away and represented presented them until he was 42. No, it's not like that. Most Adamta fans would probably love to smear a rotten ice cream onto L into Lalana's face. Taught him Dominic Solanke. Dominic Solanke does not start well at clubs. I've already said, the bloke needed 18 months to finally get off the mark for Bournemouth, following a pricey 20 million pound move from Liverpool, where there he scored once in 21 Premier League games. Look, he's a completely different player to the feeble shrew he was five years ago, and just had a roaring beastly 21 goal season for Bournemouth. But 65 million pounds feels like a lot of money for a 26 
26-year-old striker who has not been capped by England in seven years. And I know it's unfair, but now that Tottenham actually have an old-school traditional number nine, then Solanke is just going to be getting compared to Harry Kane. Tries both move the K back to spaces, and Kane is literally in his name. I think he'll do okay 10 Premier League goals this season but he ain't gonna be a patch on harry kane and boy will it show west ham guido rodriguez yeah amidst all these star big name hollywood signings west ham have made this summer i don't think anyone is really bothered to notice that they've also dragged in 30 year old argentina defensive midfielder guido rodriguez from real batiste on a free he'll just be what calvin phillips was last season mostly rotting on the bench. Rodriguez is going to be one of these players that nobody's going to remember ever play for West Ham. It's probably going to be what Javier Mascherano was. An Argentine midfielder who did nothing at West Ham. Wolves, Jorgen Strand Larsen. I don't know. Five goals? Is that good? Anyway, that's it. What do, you, what do you think? Let me know. Am I wrong? Okay, are these guys going to be great? Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always. I'll talk to you in a while.